today, Father, we thank you. We worship you. You are our God. You are our King. You are in control. You are in full control. You are the controller of the heavens and the earth. We, your children, are in your presence, worshiping and adoring you. Holy Spirit, please help us even as we worship our King this day. Visit us here in this sanctuary. Visit your children in their different homes so that at the end of the day, your name and your name only will be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Give somebody a hard high five around you there and say, Jesus is the King of Kings. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. Those of us here and at home, relax. And please don't be distracted because you are in the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name. These unprecedented times should not define who you are. These unprecedented times should not press you down or discourage you because sooner than later the storm will be over and the church that is you will be the beneficiary of all this because the storm water that destroyed the then world was the same storm water that elevated Noah and his family. God is elevating you in the name of Jesus. I don't like your amen. I'll be taking my Bible reading for the sermon of this morning from Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord? And was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. The title of this morning's message is Another Nebuchadnezzar. As you journey through this life, issues will definitely pop up both in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm. And not every matter or every issue should matter in your life. Some issues are only for your information and not for your action. Example, when you drive around and you want to buy gas into your car, when you see the price there, it is for your information and not for your action because you cannot change that price. So there are some issues that will pop up in your life that is just meant for your information and not for your action. However, it is a nonchalant attitude when you fail to pay attention to important matters. Listen, folks, your personal life and your spiritual well-being should matter to you. Since your life is evolving, it is a great importance. It is of great importance to you that you take care of yourself. You must love you first. Permit that sentence. But you must love you first. You must befriend you first. You must pray for you first. You must say good things for you first. After all, the scripture says that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. So the quality of the kind of love you have for your neighbor is determined by the kind of love you have for yourself. Therefore, please don't ever leave things to chance. Saying what will be, will be. No, sir, no, ma. <laughs> Nothing works until it is worked upon. And you and your family, you are all a work in progress. We are talking about another Nebuchadnezzar. You see, 
beside King Saul and Samson, another biblical character that messed it and missed it out of carelessness or insensitivity was King Nebuchadnezzar. God gave him a very disturbing dream. He also gave him the interpretation. He was advised as how to prevent his advert effect, the advert effect of the dream. Yet, he did absolutely nothing about it for a whole year. Here was the advice that he was given in Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. Daniel 4, 27. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, the counsel, the advice, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. That was the advice. Simple advice. Show righteousness. Show mercy. That was the advice. He was shown the problem and he was also given the interpretation and the solution to the problem. Yet, for a long time, he did nothing about it until judgment came upon him. Wow! The seven years of madness, the seven years of living in isolation, the seven years of living amidst animals could have been averted. Therefore, his inaction was negligence of the highest order. Shout hallelujah, somebody. But hold on here, brethren. Don't, don't be too quick to condemn this king. We have several Nebuchadnezzars in our church today. We have many of them in our churches today. In Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. Micah 6 verse 8. He has shown thee, O oh man, O oh woman, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? <laughs> But to do justly and to love mercy, just like Nebuchadnezzar, righteousness and mercy. And the Bible is talking to you, the word of God is talking to you, that you should do justly, righteously, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. How many times have you heard it, brother? How many times have you heard it, sister? That it is good to be good? How many times have you heard it, sister? How many times have you heard it, brother? That to do justly and to show mercy is beneficial? How many times have you heard it? How many times have you been told about how to relate with your wife and children? Yet, you still do things the way you like. Because you proclaim that you are the head of your family. You can do what you like. You can go where you like without considering your family. Okay, madam. How many times have you heard that you should submit to your husband and yet you are doing things your own way? Another Nebuchadnezzar. James 4 verse 17. James 4 verse 17. Therefore, what is it therefore? To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Please don't neglect anything that will add value to your life. Do not neglect anything that will add value to your family. You are special and unique. A beacon meant to illuminate, to, to illuminate and to inspire.
shout hallelujah somebody. The world is waiting for your glorious manifestation. Because you have something to offer. Therefore don't allow anything or anyone to relegate you to the background. You are too smart to be ignored. Put your hands together and say, John Igbe William Mewa, you are too smart to be ignored. You are too knowledgeable to be pushed to the corner. Hallelujah. You are too smart to be pushed to the corner. You are too knowledgeable to be ignored. So don't allow anyone to push you to the background because your ebony skin color makes you stand out. You are an integral part of this world. You matter in the affairs of this life. You have a portion in this life. Look at what God said in Psalm 116 verse, 115 and verse 16. Psalm 115 and verse 16. It says the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. You are part of the earth. Part of the earth belongs to you. But you must do something. You must do something. Because you do not have a spare life. The life you are living right now, right now, this Sunday morning of August 2020, it is the life, the only life you have. You don't have a spare life. Hmm. You don't have a spare life. You must do something with your life. You have a part to play in your success story. Why not move right now and do something? We are still talking about another Nebuchadnezzar. Very likely, this king called Nebu or Nebuchadnezzar in full was always saying, mm, I will get it done tomorrow. I will get it done tomorrow. And when tomorrow shows up, when tomorrow becomes the present day, I will get it done tomorrow. He was doing it until a whole year was over. God was waiting for him. Heavens were waiting for him. Yet he did absolutely nothing. <laughs> until a whole year was over. Look up, brother. Look up, my sister. You can be likened to another Nebuchadnezzar if you are a procrastinator. <laughs> Procrastination is often said to be a thief of time. You don't leave. You don't leave what you ought to do today until tomorrow. Hmm. Because you don't know what tomorrow holds. As we go on, I'll tell you a story of a member of this church. You see, brother, my sister, people of God, success come, becomes an uphill task if you live your life procrastinating. I will get it done later. Sweep the floor. I will, got it, I will get it done later. Why not cook the food? Uh, I will cook later. I will sort it out later. It is always later. It is always tomorrow. It is always later. It is always tomorrow. You are a lazy person. Get up. And do something about your life. A lot of us have procrastinated to the point that laudable ventures, laudable advantages, laudable opportunities have eluded you because it has always been here. Yeah, I will call them tomorrow. I will send the resume tomorrow. I will sign on for that training tomorrow. I will update my resume tomorrow. I will do it tomorrow. And when tomorrow shows up, let me tell you, brother, there is another tomorrow. But as you are allowing today to become tomorrow, tomorrow you are eating off your time because the Bible says everything is about time and chances. 
I pray for you. I pray for you. That may the Lord grant you the second time to make amend to your ways. I pray for you that the years that the canker worms have eaten, the years that the caterpillars have destroyed, the years that the palmer worms have eaten up, God will restore back to you. But you must move. Let Tell somebody beside you, come on, move, 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 move. Jesus Christ constrained his disciples to move to the other side. I pray that the Holy Spirit will constrain you. The Holy Spirit will move you to the next level in the name of Jesus. Put those hands together and say, Pastor, I am moving. I am moving. I am moving. I am moving. Another Nebuchadnezzar. Remember, brother, as you journey through this life, that you have a part to play. And God has a role to play also. And remember, time will not wait for anyone. Just because your wristwatch stopped, that does not mean that time had stopped. Listen, time will keep on moving on. Whether your wristwatch is working or not, whether you look at time or not, time waits for no one. And no wonder there is a saying, time is money. Look at your neighbor, give him a hard high five. Look at your wife, look at your husband, and say, time is money. Don't waste time, because if you waste time, you are wasting money. Another Nebuchadnezzar, the story in Isaiah 41, verse 6 and 7. Isaiah 41, 6 and 7. It says, they help everyone his neighbor. And everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. And he that smooteth with the hammer, him that smote with the anvil, saying, it is ready. Tell your neighbor, it is ready. It is ready. Tell your husband, it is ready. Tell your wife, it is ready. Tell your children, it is ready. It is ready. It is ready now. It is ready. It is ready. They were saying now, it is ready. This is the time. It is ready for the soldiering. It is ready to bind together. It is ready to move. It is ready to start the business. The time is now. The time is set. They said, it is ready for the soldiering. And he fasteneth it with nails that it should not be moved. The reason you have been moved is because you have been saying tomorrow, tomorrow, I will, I will, you know, I'll do it later, later, I'll sort it out later. It has always been later. That's why you have been moved. The reason King Nebuchadnezzar ended up in the jungle, living amongst animals, was because he did not play his part. The building of the boat or uh, the boat or the ship or the ark by Noah was an act of faith because up till that, that time, there had never been any rainfall. Yet, Noah followed the measurements as instructed by the Lord. Where to put the window? Where to put the doors? Let me tell you, brother, he still listened to the Lord. Listen to me, church of God. Not all decisions should be made with blind hopes. <laughs> blind hopes. You are not that educated and you want a job of an educated person. That is a blind hope. You have not prepared your resume. You have not even posted any resume. You cross your leg in the home and said, what will be, will be. That is blind hopes. Brethren, evaluate what you are waiting and trusting God for. Evaluate it. Should I wait for this? Does it what's waiting for this? <laughs> when I've evaluated my madam-to-be, my wife-to-be, I evaluated her. 
this is a woman to be with. This is a woman to live with. This is the will of God for me. This is a personality that I will love to spend my entire life with. I evaluated her. I sized her out. I found out this is a godly piece of greatness that God has blessed me with. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. I waited for one, two, three, four, five years and I was still ready to wait. You better evaluate what you are waiting for. You better evaluate what you are hoping for. If it's worth it, wait for it. For the vision is for an appointed time. Though it tarries, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not lie. It will surely come. Keep on waiting. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. You will not be weary. Keep on waiting. If you evaluate it, that this is the will of God for you, it will surely come. It will not delay. Another Nebuchadnezzar. Mary's pregnancy, I mean Mary the Virgin in the Bible, her pregnancy was a miracle, but she still had to carry that pregnancy for nine months like any other pregnancy. Hallelujah. God's plan does not negate the process of time. That's why I want to employ you, brother. I want to employ you, sister. Walk. What did I say? Walk before you start to run. <laughs> Walk before you start to run. When I arrived, I this, this America, I was sleeping on the floor with a blown mattress. I don't know what happens, but before the morning, both the mattress and I were flat on the floor. <laughs> I was counting the time because I knew then that this is where God wants me to be. Don't jump into that marriage without evaluating it. Don't jump into that man or that woman. Evaluate her. Find out if she's the will of God for you. Find out if he's the will of God for you. Don't just jump from one business to the other. Do not jump from one city to the other. Evaluate it. Is this what the Lord wants me to do at this time? <laughs> oh, time, time, time. Are you another Nebuchadnezzar? Listen to me. The stone, the stone that killed Goliath, I believe that stone was anointed. But nevertheless, the skill of David played a part. <laughs> Therefore, developing skills does not mean you are not anointed because everything is not about anointing. You can be anointed without skill. You will end up without anything. Because anointing does not pay bills. <laughs> you don't go to your landlord and say, behold an anointed pastor. No, that does not pay bills. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, there is an anointing upon my life. Yet I spent quality times preparing for my sermon. I don't just wake up Sunday morning and I've just put something. No. By today, I'll start next Sunday. Next Sunday's message. And I work on it every day. Because everything is not about anointing. You don't pass that board exam by anointing. No, you pass it by studying. Say, study. To show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. I still spend time. Holy Spirit, help me convey this message to the people. Help me distribute this message to the people. No wonder some of you will call and say, Pastor, that message was for me. I don't know what you were going through. But the Holy Ghost knows exactly what you're going through. And he has met you at the point of your knees. Like he's meeting you right now at the point of your knees. Put those hands together and say, Holy Ghost, let me have the portion of this word this morning. 
another Nebuchadnezzar. Prophet Eli messed up because he just couldn't control or train his children. You missed out if you did not attend today's Sunday school. I went through one class and I went through another class. The elders class that I be, that the elders class <laughs> The elders' class was very bubbly. They were very, very, very active. As the teacher was teaching, you'll be hearing, yes, aha, yes, very active. Old people, your life will be sweet to the last drop. Young people, you will be old and aged also. Let somebody shout, amen. Eli did not train his children well, and they were messing up, and God sent a judgmental message to him. 1 Samuel 3, verse 13, from verse 13. 1 Samuel 3, from verse 13. For I have told him, God was telling Sam, Samuel, I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his son made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. That was what God told Eli and buttressed it through Samuel. Look at what Samuel said. Because Eli finally said, uh, Sam, Samuel, the Lord spoke to you, right? Yes, come and tell me what the Lord told you. Confirmation. For Samuel 3.18. And Samuel, for Samuel 3.18. And Samuel told him every wit, that is everything, and hid nothing from him. And he, Eli, said, It is the Lord, let him do what she made him good. Wow! Instead of falling down on his face and say, God, tender justice with mercy. He said, ah, is that, is that, because Samuel had ju was just trying to hide it. He said, is this what you're hiding from me? He the Lord, let him do what he likes. No wonder, like Nebuchadnezzar, Eli, like Nebuchadnezzar, did absolutely nothing. No wonder, he died. His two sons died. Died. His grand, I mean, his daughter in law died the same day. Brother, sister, don't abandon that vision because of challenges that you are facing with. You are faced with. Do something. Don't abandon that business idea. Don't just put it on the shelf. Nothing good comes easy. Work on it. Keep on working on it. That's exactly what Isaiah 28. And verse 10, Isaiah 28, 10. It says, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Don't just put that idea on the shelf. Say, oh, tomorrow I'll work on it. He say, add something to it. Every day, work on that business idea. Do some feasibility studies. Check out those who have done or are doing what you want to do. So that you don't reinvent the wheel. Those that have gone through the classes or this, the, 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 the course you want to go, ask them. When you pass your head that you've done this before, can you help me? Daddy pastor, I heard that you were a tailor before. Can you? <laughs> can you? Help me in this area. Then I'll just give you my invoice. <laughs> now I'm just teasing you. I will tell you what I know. I will tell you what I know. Brother, sister, trust me. You can do more for your life. You can do more for your family. You can create a unique atmosphere of peace and tranquility in your home, in your marriage. Don't be the boogeyman. Don't be the bully man. Don't be the boogie woman. Don't be the bully woman. You can create an atmosphere of peace and tranquility. Another Nebuchadnezzar. 
Don't be happy and say, I'm a, I'm a bass man. I'm a drummer. I'm a keyboardist. I'm an usher. I'm a nurse. I'm a this, I'm a that. David! Like our David here. Was a shepherd boy. Yet, he was also a musician. Ha. He was also a sling shooter. And he was also a man of war. So you can multitask. Tell your neighbor, you can multitask. You can add value to your life by adding value to your resume. You can add value to your life by adding value to your marital relationship. Don't procrastinate. I called a pastor friend of mine the other day. And immediately God the call. He said, wow, pastor, I had wanted to call you, but you have beaten me to it. He now said, that is why procrastinating is not good. Don't procrastinate, otherwise people will always beat you to it. Take advantage of that opportunity. And don't allow anyone to beat you to it. Pharaoh had a disturbing dream. And Joe, Joseph showed up and told him, this dream, this is the devastating result, but this is the good answer. The Bible says immediately, Pharaoh acted and placed Joseph to be the second in command in the land of Egypt because Pharaoh acted. Why not be that Joseph that was between Pharaoh and the Egyptian as a worker in heaven's glorious embassy? Why not be what Joseph was to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians? Come up with good ideas, laudable ideas. We will work on it. We will pray about it so that we can move this church to the next level. Wow. Another Nebuchadnezzar. Hebrews 2 verse 3. Hebrews 2 verse 3 that we read earlier on. It says, how shall we escape if we neglect such great salvation which at the first began to, to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. So many people have the knowledge of salvation, yet they are not doing anything about it. So many people know that there is a heaven and there is a hell, and yet they don't care. How can you escape? So many people have heard that Jesus Christ is the only way, the only way to escape hell. The only way to get saved. Right now, they are doing nothing. And guess what? They are also in the church. That's why there are many Nebuchadnezzars in the church of God. They hear the word of God, but they are not doing anything about it. Pay your tithe and offering. They know about it. They know where it is written, but they are not doing anything about it. Evangelize, win souls. They know about it, but they are not doing anything about it. As the Holy Spirit be urging you to forgive a particular person, and you'll be saying, over my dead body. Has the Holy Spirit be impressing it in you to help a particular brother in his need, a particular sister in her need, and you've been struggling with the Holy Spirit? The Bible says in second, I mean James 2, verse 15 and 16. James 2, 15 and 16. It says, if a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, depart, or unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which, which are needful to the body. Does, what does that profit? Lift up your hand. And say, Father, please help me. No, no, pray, pray, pray that prayer. Say, Father, please help me. Please help me, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let me tell you, I said I was going to tell you a story. A member of this church was talking to me. He was excited and, and frightened. Long story short, he found himself 
in one of the songs, I think Abbasin or Krogath, he found himself there. But as he was entering into the store, there was this man who stepped out of his car. Angrily, he was so angry and he was cursing, using foul language. And because of the foul language he was using, this brother looked at him and saw the car he was coming out from. So they met in the store. And he actually wanted to buy something for, buy something, but he couldn't pay for it because he didn't have money. And they couldn't give him for free. No credit. Come tomorrow. So he just dropped it at the cashier's desk. So when this brother was to pay, he saw everything that was going on. And the Holy Spirit prompted him. Pay for it. And he removed this card and paid for it. And because he saw the, the person outside and the car, he took what he paid for in the bag and he rushed towards him because he knew him and he knew the car and went in there and said, sir, you wanted to pay for this, but you don't have money, but I have paid for it. And he gave it to him and he went back. As he was going back to the store, this same person was rushing towards him. Then he said, because he was, he was looking unkept. So he, this brother was telling me that. I said, okay. Hail Mary, full of grace. No, I'm just kidding now. It's like, okay, now it's time to die. But he said, surprisingly to him, he came and knelt down with one knee and said, thank you. I wanted to buy this for my mother. She needed it, but I didn't have money to buy it for my mother. And I entered the car, and I said, that is the end of story. I'm going to kill myself, but you brought this. He was shedding tears, crying, and everybody that was passing by were just looking at them. He saved a soul because he acted promptly. Are you another Nebuchadnezzar? The Holy Spirit have been telling you, do this, do this, do that. Call that brother, call that sister. Give that brother, it could be a dollar, it could be ten dollars, it could be a hundred dollars. But you have been saying, mm, I worked for it. You are another Nebuchadnezzar. To him that knoweth how to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. What area of your life have you been resisting God? Repent immediately and obey his voice promptly what area have you been disobeying god oh i i, I will do it tomorrow yeah i'll do it tomorrow no i'll sort it out later trust me why is it always tomorrow? The Bible says now, today, is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. It's always, I will do it again. I will do it. He said, how can you escape if you neglect such a great salvation? Shall we rise? Lift both hands to the Lord and say, Father, I repent. I have been receiving the prompting of the Holy Spirit, but I have neglected it. The Holy Spirit has been prompting me, telling me to do this, to do that, but I have always postponed it. I will get it done. I will get it done. I will get it done. Start that business. I will get it done. Oh, don't eat. Don't eat. Don't eat it. Mm, okay, let me eat this one tomorrow. Some of you, you know you shouldn't be drinking soda, but you said Jesus turned water to wine. So this soda, this Coca-Cola, it is Coca-Cola, but I pray now Jesus turned it to water. Not forgetting Jesus did it only once in the Bible. Exercise, work out. Uh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. Become a worker in the church. And be useful in the church. Mm, I will do it later. I will do it tomorrow. I will do it later. You are another Nebuchadnezzar. 
who could have averted seven years in the jungle 